Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Here at Deep Adventure Ministries, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Today we have a man with us, uh, Matt Smith, who's joining us. He is the original Boy Scout, so we'll be we're gonna be talking a little bit about his adventures as a youth. I know some stuff you guys won't, don't know, but it's gonna be we'll be digging into that and a little bit of other areas of his life, and we're gonna talk story about uh, a new adventure he's on in in his work and his ministry. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. I just want to... I have this thought in my mind to, to talk to you about, to encourage you today. Here in Hawaii, there's this artist that does this, these beautiful paintings of the local Hawaiian people. And there's this painting of this one younger man in a, an outrigger canoe. And he's been paddling. And sometimes, like I paddle the Molokai Channel, it's about 28 miles. And it's very daunting. The currents, the tides, the wind... Uh, the ground grounds swell, the winds swell, all of those can work against you. And this, this young man has been paddling and paddling and paddling. And you can see he's finally entering, getting close to the bay. And I remember my paddle was 10 hours and 19 minutes with six minutes of rest. So, so I kind of know that feeling. And that feeling of, of going against, feeling like the whole world is against you, and you're paddling into the wind and you're paddling against all of the all it seems like everything the wind the tide and everything is against you there's this young man paddling that like that and he's slumped forward in his uh, in the canoe and there's an ancient there's a guardian angel there with him and i just want to let you know right now if you're if you are a human being you're up against it everybody is rocky balboa everybody has adversity in their lives if you most of the people if you just if you if you knew what they were going through the person that you're having coffee with or the person at the water cooler if you really knew the inner turmoil and struggles that people go through uh you would realize you're not alone that we're all this is this is a a world of challenge but jesus said something about these challenges he said be of good cheer because in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer because i've overcome the world and uh and so it, when we work and we're, we're up against it, just keep going. When I paddled my surfboard across the Molokai Channel, it was really about the toughest conditions you could do, but I just had to paddle my, my, I paddled my surfboard, I should say. I had to paddle one more stroke and then one more stroke and then one more stroke. And when I paddled my bicycle across the United States, as I left San Diego for Jacksonville, Florida, and I went into record-breaking heat in the desert, I had to just push my pedal down one more time. And as soon as you enter into a, a, a challenge, as soon as you enter into uh, a, the desert like that, you're actually on your way out. You're on your way out the other side. So persevere. Put your hope and trust in Jesus. Yeah, last night I had to get up in the middle of the night to do a talk. And my wife was being so sweet. She said, oh, it's going to be so hard. I'm sorry you have to get up at 2.30 in the morning to, to give a talk. And, and I said, no, that's really cool because that's where Christ meets me. You know, when I'm at the end of my strength, that's where I get to be with Jesus because that's he's when I'm weak, then he is strong. So just put your faith and trust and your confidence in Jesus and let him let him bless you. And every now and then give a shout out to your guardian angels. I mean, I, I call mine. I have an angel. I call him. Hey, hey, Nalu, which means mountain wave. I just call him. Hey, sometimes. But you can give your guardian angel a nickname. He's there helping you and the Holy Spirit is there helping you. So keep one more paddle stroke, one more push down on the pedal, one more step and, and you'll be finding your way on the out the other side of the desert we're with uh, a guest of ours matt smith it, we had a little bit of challenge getting us together huh <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've had a few road, roadblocks but we overcame them <laughs> matt can you it's uh, probably easier for you to introduce what you do right now for osv i i, I had matt smith on. i was very interested what he what he had to say about uh, a new a new uh, uh outreach that they have 
And I thought, OSV, okay, I don't think I've ever heard of them. And then he tells me it's our Sunday visitor. So, yeah, so talk story. Tell us what, tell us what you're doing, your, your role is there, and then we'll kind of dig into a little bit about who Matt Smith is. Well, first, thanks for having me today, Bear. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and talk to your audience. And so thank you. I'm very, very, very happy to be here. So my title is sort of Star Trek-y sounding. It's Director of Strategic Alliances uh, for our Sunday Visitor Institute for Catholic Innovation. And as we talk a little bit more, I'll tell you a little bit about the evolution of um, the Institute. Uh, been around since 1915. My, my job right now uh, with the Institute is, is a lot of outreach and community engagement. I deal with many of our traditional grantees, uh, relationship manager with them, do site visits, some of them assessment of our grants, um, but also as we've undertaken over the last 12 months, this journey into innovation, um, really sort of managing the innovation challenge, which I know we'll talk about um, our second year of doing it, um, and and thinking about ways that, that the Institute can support innovation in the Catholic Church from the heart of the church. So things just, like uh, our OSV talks, the things like the OSV challenge, um, and just a variety of other things, working with the team at the Institute. It's been very exciting. I just started about a year ago, a little over a year ago, so it's been quite a ride, uh, you know, not only uh, uh, transitioning to a, a new uh, career or vocation, but also um, in the time of pandemic. So it's, it's, just so, it's been a oh, lot of fun. Well, that, speaking of innovation, right, we needed that then. Well, we're going to circle, circle around back to hearing more about that. But first, I wanted to hear about, I introduced you as one of the, as an, as a, as a, as a the Boy Scout in America. You're, you're uh, you know, you're as a Boy Scout, you're out there roughing it and toughing it and, uh, and, uh you told me about kind of a YouTube moment while you're. Yeah, and I, it, yes, and I don't know if I'm the original Boy Scout, but I was very lucky to to have. Uh, well, what, that what do they call OG? The the old okay. School. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was very lucky to be part of that organization growing up. It was a, a lot of fun, a lot of great experiences. Um, and what I was sharing with you, Bear, before we came on the air, uh, was a little bit um, about a, a incident when I was in eighth grade, so about thirteen or fourteen. Um, we were we were cross country skiing, so I'm in northeastern Indiana, and we were up in a state park called Bogagan State Park, uh, about an hour north of Fort Wayne, where I live now and where I grew up. Um, and we were cross country skiing out in the park, and it was really just you know probably a dozen uh, Boy Scouts. Our troop leader was back in the lodge, and oh, that's out. what troop that's what troop leaders do. He had that hot. Well, he had no, that hot. He had that hot wine. This is wine. almost 40 years later, so well, what is I can, it, what I'm is okay that stuff, sharing it. What is that stuff you guys drink in the winter up there? It's like a hot wine, or it's almost like a sangria, isn't it, or something? But it's it's hot Oh, hot are wine. you talking about like mold cider or something okay, so like that? I don't that, know. Or? So he's back at the ranch, you know, <laughs> and you guys are out there in 20 below weather probably. <laughs> well, you know, it toughens us up. Um, so we're out, you know, we're out on the trails, cross-country skiing, and, and I had grown up. Uh, downhill skiing my dad had taken us out to Colorado a lot and it's where I learned to ski and so we've done skiing in the west and things like this and I think as your listeners will know um, maybe not in Hawaii but uh, in the in the north you know the cross-country skis allows your ankles to move um, up and down where the snow skis um, bind your ankle to the ski and so um, we started to go down a slight incline and I went to pivot and turn uh, to slow down a little bit and my ankle came up which I wasn't used to and I started to fall so I reached out with my right hand to, to plant the pole and and the just the force of the turn my head went down into the pole and it it I mean the pole hit my cheekbone and then up into the eye socket and so um and so I mean blood started coming out of the eye socket so I'm with boy scouts right you think we're always prepared you know yeah right exactly well. Yeah. Well, 12 of those boys just stood and looked at me while there was blood dripping down Did my eye. Did they say, put a tourniquet like, around your neck? Did that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm saying to them, hey, how does it look? You know, and uh, they're just looking at me. Uh, yeah, they're, you know, they're throwing uh, up and like, no, it, you might need a couple stitches as they're throwing. <laughs> yeah. Lucky enough, um, one of the Boy Scouts, a lifelong friend, still friends with him, uh, had a bandana, grabbed the bandana, shoved ice into it or snow that we were with, and then put it around the eye um, um wow and i will i will tell you that um and you know again this is one of those weird moments in your life 
I would, the thing that went through my mind at that time was, if you remember one of the uh, leaders of Israel at the time, Moshe oh, Dayan, yeah. Yeah. had a patch. Is it you and that's, <laughs> so in my mind, I'm you like, are, oh, this is what I'm going to look like. Yeah, well, you look kind of bad. Like. Um, pirate. So, you know, we, we uh, probably about a mile back to the, the uh, um, you know, the lodge, the, the troop leader, of course, was aghast. I mean, because I've got dried blood and this big act on you know, red blood, you know, thing. So he piles us, uh, myself and two of the other Boy Scouts into his car. And, you know, at the time, you know, he's probably 25, 26. And I thought he was a well-established guy. Well, his car had no heat. So we drive an hour back to Fort Wayne. Oh. And my parents lived on the north side of the town, which is right into the highway. <laughs> my parents were having a dinner party that night. So we pull into their house. I ring the doorbell. Um, and so my mom opens the door, looks at me with this big bloody mass on my, my head. And, you know, the first thing out of her mouth was Lee, get in the car. I got to call everybody, tell them it's canceled. We're going to the hospital. And I hear my dad yell from the kitchen. What happened? Who is that? And, <laughs> but everything ended up fine. There was no, uh, loss of vision or anything. There seemed to be um, some lo loss of mental capacity. I'm just going to say that in a gentle way. Yeah, let's See, we'll you, use that. I can blame that a lot. You know, it's you, like early, uh, like you went to, if I got in a football or things like that. Yeah. Well, when you came to the door, she didn't say, sorry, we gave at the office. She, she yeah. kind of recognized you. Hey, this is the Bear Wozniak Convention. We've got to take a break. We're talking with Matt Smith. He's the director of Strategic Alliance for the Institute of Catholic Innovation at the, our, our Sunday Visitor OSV. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Bullfrogs. Toledo, Washington is a logging town in the shadows of Mount St. Helens, where work is tough and men and women are tougher. My latest visit to Toledo included the annual bullfrog jumping contest during the Toledo Cheese Days. My son-in-law Don, daughter Angela, and grandkids Duke and Callie had the duty during the nights preceding the jumping contest of catching the bullfrogs. Catching bullfrogs is my daughter's favorite sport after razor clam digging. Yep, you heard it right. And she's a stunning beauty of a school marm, too. Watching kids trying to goad their toads along by blowing on their rears and pounding on the ground was, well, more than amusing. For the kids, it's off the charts exciting. Later, I got thinking about this amusing scene and how it is similar to our walk with God. Figuring out God's ways is often like being bullfrogs out of water. We prefer the water, our primary habitat, but sometimes God wants us to walk, I mean hop, into his habitat, which can be unfamiliar territory. That's why we need faith. We can't see God, but he's behind us, goading us along. The breath of God's Spirit sometimes blows on us as he urges us on to his path. We sometimes feel him blowing on us, but we often stubbornly refuse to jump into the race of his life for us. I advise moving along, for he starts pounding on the ground. Everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So, get off your duff and get in the race of life with God. This is Dan Laboon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff, and if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash bearwozniak 
or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite everybody, go to our website, deepadventure.com. If you sign up for our newsletter, you get to free, a free audio download of my most recent book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And then every Saturday, we send out some cool stuff. You get the radio show that's airing that night on EWTN. You get that early in the day, and you get a YouTube video version of it so you can see what our guests look like. And it's a great way to share it with people that you care about. You know, sharing with them a video, a YouTube link, is, is not an uncommon way to, to spread the gospel. You can share it with your sons, your, your, um, uh, your, your friends. And, uh, and so we encourage you to do that, especially we encourage the mama bears to go there and sign up uh, because you're a big part of our ministry. I know that you you pray for the men in your lives and so and you need a way to 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 bring them the message. This is a great way to just share the YouTube link with them. And we have a special part of our newsletter for the men called the Man Cave and a special part of our newsletter for the women called Mama Bears. And I should say when people when the women sign up for the Mama Bears now, they go to deepadventure.com and they sign up to become a Mama Bear. They get a Mama Bear. They get a a, a Catholic biker teddy bear it's really cool looking and so uh that's something special we love our mama bears and there's nothing more fierce than a mama bear we're talking with our guest matt smith he's the director of strategic alliances at the osv institute for catholic innovation you know he we were talking about a, 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 a not a downhill a cross-country skiing accident that he had you know i i used to ski uh matt i've done some cross-country skiing and it's very hard it's a great workout and I've done some downhill skiing, but basically I'd, I downhill ski just because there was some incredible mac and cheese at the top of the summit, you know, and my friends would drag me up there. You know, my wife is a big snowboarder, but um, I don't really care if I never get to ski again. I, 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 but, you know, here in Hawaii, we do downhill ski. There's two types of skiing here in Hawaii. Hawaii. There's a, we do have snow on the top of the, one of the volcanoes. And people ski there, but there's an ancient tradition in Hawaii of of mountain uh, surfing. Um, they had had really long um, surfboard. It might have been about five and a half inches wide, and then had little rails on it. And the original way that competition would take place here, because remember this is a warrior society, is two men would stand on the on the beach. One would paddle out to do a certain distance and then come back and catch a wave and come in. The other man would run up the mountain and surf down the mountain and then they would pass each other and the other one go out to the ocean and the other one go up the mountain and the first one to make it back would win the contest. So it wasn't about how pretty you surfed, it was just about mana as we say here, mana means power. So uh, yeah, so we, we have we have two types of, of skiing here. So That's we, awesome, I was unaware of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, it's, um, it's, um, uh, the the Hawaiian tradition here is is to be an all around waterman, you know. So we we surf, we snorkel, we 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 scuba, we sail, we spearfish, we we regular fish. We you know the, because this is more of a, a a home of people who live on the in the ocean more than on the aina than on the land. But uh, you know we were talking about your own your own personal history. So you uh, you were raised uh, a, a, as a traditional Catholic, and what was your journey towards going deeper with the Lord? Well, you know, I was lucky enough to be raised in a, a Catholic home and, and or fortunate enough and, and went to 12 years of Catholic school, um, had a great education and, and um, then went off to college and and uh, on to get my Ph.D. I went straight through Bear. Um, just a variety of things worked out that I was able to, to stay in school and get supported from scholarships and things like that and really fell away from my faith during that time mm -hmm. as I was working on my PhD and 
and you know uh, sort of immersed in a, a a lot of different um things not not immoral or things like that but a lot of different thought a lot of different um movements and a lot of different sort of interior work um that just uh, did not align with church and i what do you, know, what, do, what do you mean by movement by movements well you know i read a lot of philosophy existentialism uh postmodern philosophy a lot of yeah. those kind of things and and you know a lot of them um at that time especially in the you know late 90s um sort of the french postmodernists were were very much in vogue even in um, you know, literary circles and things like that. And so, you know, that was a lot of what I was reading and, you know, Marxism and, and a lot of things that, you know, were not aligned with the Catholic faith. And, you know, I, I, I think that there's a lot of folks um, that, you know, as I've talked in, in with others my age it, that had similar type of experiences, um, you know, in, in the sense of, of, you know, being raised, I won't say in an insular world, but, you know, pretty focused on my faith growing up. And then, sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, moved away from it as, as I well, went into my mid-20s. Well, what, 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 uh, what type of, what, what philosopher were you attracted to the most? I'm just curious. Well, I read a lot of Derrida, Jacques Derrida. I read a lot of Louis Althusser, um, Karl Marx. Um, you know, uh, Judith Butler, uh, you know, just like I said, a so, lot. So, um, so there's, there's nothing wrong with, with, you know, young people out there, it's, it's good to question your faith. It's really good to, uh, to try to, it, because what it does is it, it, it's like the Thomas Aquinas, right? He, he asks a question and gives the two or three best worst wrong answers. And then when you come to, uh, back to the study, well, this is the correct answer. You go, oh, it makes sense. You know, you, you, um, he, he, here's a question. Here's here's really a good representation of what a, a good wrong answer would be, and here's another one. Here's maybe even a third one, and then he says on the contrary, and then he quotes a scripture, and he gives you his reasoned uh, answer based on a synthesis of Ar uh, of Aristotelian philosophy plus revelation and the tradition of the church, and so it's it's actually good. You know, when when you're learning a sport. Uh, one of the things I'll do, I've trained in martial arts and, of course, tandem surfing and golfing and stuff. One of the things they do is they teach you how to do it wrong so that you know how to do it right. Now, I'm not saying people should go out and live an immoral life or should go out and, and dabble in, in, in things. But if you have questions, it's good to, it's good to question because then you're not – because God doesn't have any grandchildren. He only has children. Right, you got you got to you got to own it for yourself. Right. So it's okay to ask questions, but don't ever mock your 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 the way you were raised, and don't ever mock God. You can ask God questions, don't mock God though, and 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 seek. And it's okay to say well. And the other thing is, is but you know, um, Matt, I remember when I was uh, auditing banks. You know how they found whether money was counterfeit or not? How they trained their their tellers? How? They train, they train the tellers to really know what real money looks like. They don't show all the different ways it can be counterfeited. They just say, this is what real money looks like. So when you're raising your children, raise them in the Lord. Teach them. Teach them. Teach them. So that when they go out into the world in these liberal colleges, they'll say, well, that doesn't smell right. That doesn't look like real money to me, you know? Well, and, and Bear, what I will tell you is that, you know, that analogy worked really well. So after I'd gotten my Ph.D. and had my first teaching job, wonderful institution in Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, my parents were suffering some health problems and I wanted to get back closer to the Midwest. So I, I was able to get a position in Bloomington, Illinois. And I got to be honest, I felt very empty and, and sort of a void. And I, I realized that. And so when I moved to Illinois for my next teaching job, at a college there, I said, you know, I, I know what that void is. If there is a spiritual dimension, there is a dimension of my relationship with God that is not there. And so I said, you know what I'm going to do, the apartment I was living in, I'm going to go to the first church, the closest church that is to me. I, I, I wasn't going to pick a denomination. I was just going to go, I'm going to go to the first church on Sunday. Well, it happened to be a Catholic church, and it happened to be St. Mary's Catholic Church and um, run at that time by an order of Franciscan friars. So I went to the church on that Sunday, 11 o'clock mass, and um, had the experience where it felt like the homily was written for me. 
that God was talking to me. Father Rick Schneider was the pastor at the time. So that Monday I called the office and, and made an appointment to, to go see Father Rick. And I said, and I came in and I said, hey, Father Rick, I, you know, I've been away from the church for a long time. And, and, you know, I came yesterday to mass. You really talked to me and I'd really like to help out around the church. You know, I really want to do something. And I was hoping that he would, I mean, I really wanted to do something physical. Like I was hoping like, hey, we got a building that needs painted or cleaned out or something like that. And he said, hey, you know, we just had our eighth grade CCD teacher resign. We need a CCD teacher. And I said, did, did you not hear what I said? I, I've been away from the faith for 10 years. And, and uh, you know, um, you know, I, I, I don't remember. My last theological training was as a, you know, was as a senior in high school. And he said, well, he said, in a good Franciscan way, he said, I had a problem and God sent me an answer. So here's the books, read them over the next week and I'll put you in touch. Dude, the rest is history. and we need men to be teaching. We need men in that, especially that eighth grade you said. So <laughs> essential. Yeah, I have to say that was fairly brutal. And I hope oh, that, that's, oh, that's I a hope tough I, age. I shepherd the, those yeah, kids. It's into tough for a, them and tough for the, I think it's worse in high school. That little, that little seventh and eighth grade, uh, that little change over time in kids' life is really tough on them, and it's really tough on the teachers, too. We're talking with Matt Smith. He's the director of Strategic Alliance at the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation. If you don't know what OSV is, you should know. If you're a Catholic, you should know. It's our Sunday visitors. I didn't know what it was at the beginning of this interview, but we'll be right back with more uh, with with Matt Smith. Um, we want to encourage the men, the men out there to go to deepadventure.com. Bear's Man Cave is a, a real special group of knuckle dragging uh misfits uh men who want who have the a desire to go deeper with the lord but really desire fellowship with other men you go to deepadventure.com and join up for our secret you can't join up for it at facebook but it's a secret facebook group and uh and then you can be part of our our, our daily conversation there and also we have uh, every two weeks or so we'll have a zoom video meet up too so for the men of the man men that are looking to go deeper with god if you don't mind hanging around with a bunch of misfits go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha this is bear wasnick from deepadventure.com I remember once I was interviewing the surfing priest, Father Don Calloway, and I said, Father, when you come in after a great session, you've ridden some really great waves, do your friends come up to you and say, man, you were awesome, or do they say, man, those waves were awesome? Surfers get credit to the waves. Uh, we, uh, what, one of the beautiful things about a surfer is when he surfs a wave, it tends to reveal the power and the beauty of the wave. When it's big and, you're, and people are surfing a half a mile or a quarter of a mile out, it's hard to even see how big that wave is. But when a surfer drops in, and you may not even see him because he's so far out, but you see that white ribbon, the thread of him surfing down the face of that wave, uh, it shows you how big and how powerful and how awesome and how beautiful that wave is. Even though you really don't see the surfer, you see the result of his carving down the wave. We give glory to the wave. That's where we as Christians receive our power is the power of the Holy Spirit. And a surfer knows I've dropped in on really big waves and done the bottom turn and just go shooting down the line and I'll get so far out in front of that wave that I lose the power and I have to carve and cut back and get into the power. Sometimes you begin in the spirit and end in the flesh. There's a great move of the Lord in your life, but then you say, oh, I've got this, God, and you just keep going on in your own strength. No, God wants you to always come back, always come back to that central power of the wave, to the central uh, presence of Jesus in your life and the power of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the ultimate experience of a surfer is to drop in and have the barrel cover over you, where you're totally hidden inside the barrel. And believe me in there, it's loud and it's powerful and it's the greatest experience of life. To be hidden in Christ is even greater. To be able to drop in and when people see you coming in your ministry and in your love and the way you live your life, they forget you're even there and they see Jesus. Be hidden in Christ. This is Bear Wozniak from deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, people love our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. You got to, when you go to watch it on Prime Video, you got to go Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak because it turns out there's a lot of Long Ride Homes out there. But you can power watch our TV show. There's, uh, we have 17 episodes up on Prime Video right now. And we just recently won uh, four tally awards for um, immersive reality. So it's a, it's a quality show. My sons uh, uh, help, help me uh, with the filming. Uh, basically, they're the editors and they're the they're the technical people and the, the head of videography when we when we go out and shoot. But we have a, a pack of men riding motorcycles and and Holy Spirit putting us in some unusual situations. So it's a real adventure. We welcome you, invite you to go to uh, uh, Prime Video and and view it. Or if you want to, <laughs> excuse me, you can go to uh, DeepAdventure.com, become a Patreon donor. And then you get all the episodes of Long Ride Home sent to you for free. And every time we get a new one done, sometimes seven or eight or nine months before it even airs on EDW Tim, you get the director's cut. So pretty cool if you go there and help support our ministry, too. We're talking with Matt Smith. He is the director of Strategic Alliance at the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation. So, Matt, you were... Uh, uh, but you're, you were majoring in, in English, and you taught English uh, I literature. did. That is correct, yes. Yeah. So, so, and and wh who are you reading right now? What what book? Are, what what are the last few books that you've been reading? Just curious. That's a really interesting question. So, um, right now, I'm reading a book called Circe. Um, it's sort of a reinterpretation of the ancient uh, Greek myth around Circe. Just start, I literally just started it last night. Uh, I believe the author's last name is Miller. Uh, you know, probably fifty pages in. It's wonderfully written. I. I um, I had the, the great um, uh, privilege of teaching mythology in some of my courses. Uh, I always enjoyed that a lot. We would read Greek and Roman, we did Norse mythology, um, we did some other uh, myths and, and those kind of things, but really enjoy sort of those modern retelling or reinterpretations. So they're really archetypes. To getting deeper in that. To some yes, degree, they're kind yes, of archetypes. A lot of Joseph Campbell type work. And, yeah, we, we learn. I mean, Joseph Campbell isn't the first place I would send people, you know, to uh, to read. He's got some kind of strange thoughts in there. But um, but we learn from Young and from our, and, and, and others, too, that there's kind of archetypes in our lives. And, and a lot of those Greek um, and uh, uh, mythological characters kind of help us kind of pull the, the blinders off and kind of see the different types of, of um, well, I guess I don't know a better word than archetype that they can show us. It's all, it's, it is fascinating. But isn't it interest, interesting how um, around the year 500 in Greece, suddenly around the time the Book of Wisdom was written, I think it was written a little bit after that, but how suddenly there was a Socrates, a Plato, and an Aristotle, just so so different than the pantheon, pantheon of... Uh, soap opera type gods of the greek <laughs> oh it is, mythology. Yeah, they are. i mean yes i mean we think reality <laughs> tv is out there go back and read some of the original <laughs> myths and and you know it's always interesting too i mean you think about even dante's uh inferno and you know where he takes many of those what he would you know before christ you know puts them in limbo many of those great thinkers who saw partial truth or we think of plato right. or we think of you brought up socrates and aristotle um, and it's very interesting how those figures play out through um, Catholic literature. And, and I always think, too, you know, you brought up archetypes and storytelling. 
I mean, we got to remember Jesus was a master storyteller. I mean, that's what the parable. Who do you think was better, Jesus or Louis L'Amour? <laughs> I gotta take Jesus. I gotta go with my. I'm father. a big Louis L'Amour fan. Hey, but uh, <laughs> but let's talk story about that for a moment. You, I know you you taught a class on science fiction, and when I was a kid, man, Isaac Asimov and Ray Bradbury, and oh, I oh, love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yes. and you know we. One of the novels that we read in that class and sparked a lot of discussion is sort of a tried and true Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And Ooh. so many people think they know the story of Frankenstein. And I saw the movie. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. A lot of people think it around that. But really, you know, that that her novel raises so many questions that are contemporary questions, you know, around science and around mm. what does it mean to be human? Uh, you know, and, and if you have the ability to do something is it an ethical choice just to do it? And you know, one of the one of the greatest themes that just sparked so much discussion, and I taught that in both public institutions and a Catholic university, you know, was the the relationship between a creator and a created. Um, and it was, it, you know, just some fascinating discussions. And um, I would often uh, sometimes bring in guest speakers, theology professors, to talk a little bit about Frankenstein. But just some great discussions around that. You know, uh, you're, uh, the thing about being Catholic is, is not denigrating other denominations, but it really is a thinking man's religion. It really is a religion where faith seeks understanding, where you can go deeper in, in so many different directions with the Lord. And, uh, and so, you know, to, 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 to ask the question science fiction-wise, what, what makes a creator? Well, a well, creator should make something out of nothing. Or he's not a creator. He's a, he's a, like the Masons called Jesus, I think, an architect. God's not an architect. He made something out of nothing. You know, totally different, totally different thing. Um, but you know, my my uh, first editor, Lou Aronica, was behind uh, was Ray Bradbury's last editor, and he was also Louis L'Amour's last editor. So that cowboy writer and the science fiction writer, and he created the whole line of Star Star Trek and Star Wars books. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So and, and and he did romance novels. So he was really really a great one to be tutored. My first book, Deep in the Way of a Surfing Guide to the Soul, Lou Aronica uh, only t- takes on two new authors a year, and just drills them. And he he really taught me how to be a storyteller. And of course, I love re- reading stories too. But so, so from from that from that time uh, teaching uh, English literature, uh, you you th- something else developed. You you uh, you. H- how did you come to? Be- you became a dean of that school, right? The liberal arts. I did. Right? Um, you know, I I had come to University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne, uh, Indiana, and you know, as a director of writing and oversaw the curriculum for the writing classes and like at many small small institutions the faculty taught a lot of different things so i had the the real luxury and and uh gift of being able to teach a wide range of classes science fiction and fantasy mythology intro to literature you know all kinds of things so when you think about the 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 literature of uh you know the Hobbit and uh, c.s lewis is you know tolkien and c.s lewis and some of those great great stories i mean those are great stories and tolkien i mean we could do a whole seminar. We could do a whole show on Tokine, but well, we'll you know, do that someday. It, it, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. You know, no, well, and like Flannery O'Connor, a lot of people mm. don't know Flannery O'Connor was Catholic. I mean, her short stories, the questions she raises in those, just wonderful. Well, but it, go ahead. Why, why are we attracted to stories like that? I, I would argue, or I would posit, that's how humans interact. We tell stories about each other. We tell stories to each other. We tell stories about ourselves. That's how we learn about each other, um, the stories um, that we make sense of the world. I mean, you think about the way that you structure your narratives about life. Um, and that's, I mean, and li- you know, going back to Homer. I mean, you know, if you want to go way back to the Odyssey and, you know, it's it's stories. Those the original are, storytelling. That, that is what makes us human. Well, it, we are on a, we are on a, we are living a story. Each of us has our own story. I like in the, in the Hobbit where where he says the young man says, uh, "I wonder what kind of adventure we're, this is we're going to be on." Life is an adventure, and history has the word "his" and it has the word "story." It's Christ's story. It's His story, and every one of us, as Catholic Church teaches us, that we're on our own personal pedagogue, our own personal journey uh, of God revealing Himself to us. And so, be excited 
that God loves you and has a plan for your life. And you never know what's around the other corner. I, about 20 years ago, I was here in my condo on the 25th floor in Waikiki, and there was this beautiful woman across the way. I could throw a rock and probably hit her from here. And I didn't know she was there, and she didn't know I was here until 16 years later we met, and, and she's my bride now. You know, but I didn't know the story that God had around the corner. I didn't know why I, I bumped into this wall and it made me turn right. You know, I didn't know why that door was closed and that door was closed. But as I continued on my journey with the Lord, he's, he, he's on a journey with us. We have a story. We're living a story. And, and we're, it's kind of like Jesus created the universe. He's the author and finisher of our faith. But it's like the author entered the book. And we also are writing a book. And we're participating with the author and finisher of our faith. But we get to say yes and we get to say no. And, and we're, we're, we're definitely part of a, of a heroic journey. And to have faith and confidence that Jesus is walking with us. Each of us has a story that's unfolding. And to keep walking it and be adventurous. That's a really profound thought. I love it. I said something smart, everybody. <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking with Matt Smith, Director of Strategic Alliances, OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation. And we're going to talk about something that they're involved with at Our Sunday Visitor that's just so important in ministry today. They have a special project, a special uh, a possibility for people that are doing innovative things in ministry. And, uh, and it's the kind of thing that normally wouldn't get funded. It's the sort of thing where um, there isn't a normal path to get funding for those sorts of things that they're attracted to. So we're going to talk about how you, if you're involved in a ministry, how you can become part of what, what they're up to. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It's the best radio show on the in the universe because we have the best guests. We have a really cool guest, Matt Smith. He's the director of Strategic Alliance for uh, the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation. You guys are up to no good, huh? I mean, you've got a new project uh, that you've been working on the last year or two uh, to, to invite innovative uh, Catholics to, to uh, help, help them, um, their vision to come come about tell us about that 
Thanks, Barrett. Uh, yeah, you know, um, a lot of your listeners may be familiar with OSV, our Sunday visitor. We've been around since ni 1912. A lot of people might know us through a weekly newspaper that that's what was started by Archbishop Knoll. Um, and we really link back to his charism of being an innovator. Uh, we do about 15 of the 17,000 parishes. We do their uh, weekly offertory envelopes. Uh, we also have a curriculum division. We have a trade book division. Uh, but the Institute, Archbishop Knoll had always thought that any money um, generated by uh, OSV, our Sunday visitor, should go back to the church. And so the Institute has been a philanthropic arm of our Sunday visitor since about 1915. Um, and in the last three or four years, we, we give out about three to four million dollars a year. Um, and you're right, last year uh, we started the OSV challenge uh, for innovation. And so it, it, it was a call out to all your entrepreneurs and innovators in the Catholic world. Uh, we received about 350 ideas. Um, and from those, we went down to 12 finalists and then three winners of $100,000 prizes each. So this year for 2021, we had such a great response and we really felt, we did some assessment with, with our traditional grants, with our challengers, and we really felt internally that the impact we could make for the church was so profound with cultivating these innovation ideas that we decided one, to do the challenge again, and then two, to, to um, put more resources into it. So right now the, the call is open for the first round of the challenge, of the Innovation Challenge 2021, and you can find that at osvchallenge.com. So osvchallenge.com will describe the contest, the challenge, have the application form, timeline, all those kind of things. But this year, what, we, what we've done is um, there will be seed money along the way. So there'll be an initial round, there'll be a second round, and then we'll get to 25 semifinalists. Those 25 semifinalists will receive, receive prize money. They'll move to 12 finalists, they'll receive larger prize money, and those 12 finalists will then compete for three $100,000 prizes. Again, we'll culminate in a demo day uh, in September, September 18th of where those 12 finalists will make their pitch to the judges, uh, the judges of the, of the competition. Right, is it going to be like the shark? It, it, we, <laughs> we always hope to be a little bit more collegial than a shark tank, but it is uh, somewhat similar. That's so cool. I will not cool. deny there is some uh, parallels, but... It's uh, innovative again, in and of itself, more, what you guys are doing. We, we try to be collegial. It's Our the shark tank. Are not our judges are not quite as sharp as the tell judges. the truth tell the truth don't do it you guys you don't know what you're getting yourself into you know I, I hope that there's 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 several people listening right now that realize this is what they this is this is what they need to do and you know the thing about it is you may you may uh, have a, a, an idea and then you drill it down because to to do the application requires some real thought and uh, and, and 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 then you don't win but in the in the process, you've developed a mission statement. You defined more clearly uh, what your real uh, doable uh, objectives are, and uh, and as you write, it's kind of like as you write, it'll come to life for you what it is you really want to do. You'll begin again to think, I got to communicate this idea to these people, and you're going to realize, well, that idea doesn't make any sense, but this does. So it almost becomes, I like the fact we're talking about stories. This is actually a journey, and you may, your, your funding idea may be eliminated in the first round, but that doesn't mean your ministry hasn't developed some, some traction because you've, you've put together, you've taken the time to put together the thoughts. And, you know, I'll tell you, um, Matt, you know, being a, a media evangelist, there isn't anything under the, the Catholic, you know, there's just, people may not know there's this book called The Directory, and you get into the directory if you are, you know, feeding the poor. You have, you, you have to have uh, kind of a tangible sort of project. I met with um, Monsignor Gino at the Vatican a couple of years ago, and he, at that time, he was in charge of all of uh, evangelization for the English-speaking world, and he had done. Saint, he was in charge of the whole year of Jubilee for Pope Francis. And I began to share with him about where up to. He goes, "This is the best idea. This is I, people come to me every day with an idea, and." Uh, I just tell them programs don't work. Um, you, you need something more than a program. But I said this is the, this is the, this is innovative because you're, you're speaking in a way that communicates the gospel in in people's language. And then he then he asks the next question. Well, how are you funding this? 
right? He's a very practical man. And it's, you're not going to, people like that are involved in this type of ministry or something else innovative you guys are up to out there, you're probably not going to qualify under the directory for those big foundations that say, what, what, what uh, subletter of this directory do you fall into? They're looking for innovation, and we need that. You know what an entrepreneurial person is? You know what a missionary is? It, it, evangelization and sales are kind of the same thing. It's kind of like the same calling. Um, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial people are people that have maybe a, I don't know, they, they, they see opportunity other people don't, almost like they have ADHD. Talk to, talk to those people and give them, the, give them the, what they need to do to, to move forward in their vision. Well, Bear, I, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that you, you recognize that entrepreneurial or that innovative spirit um, is a little just a little bit different than you know sort of um, stayed steadfast and you know kind of going with the flow which there is nothing wrong with but with that innovative or entrepreneurial spirit what we found even with last year is I, I would really share with your listeners if if you even think that you might have an idea that you want to see blossom go in as bear said spend some time with the application because it might allow you to plan a little bit strategically how that idea can be uh, actualized. Um, and so, you know, we're not only looking for the, the most innovative ideas, that's very important. But what we found with last year's challenge too is the person is equally important. Um, because as you know, Bear, when you're an entrepreneur or you're an innovator, you're gonna, you're gonna try and you're gonna fail, you're gonna try and you're gonna yes. fail. And, and you've gotta have some grit, you gotta be able to pick yourself up. But the other thing is you, you've got to recognize that, that you, you can't be stuck with this is only what we can do. You've got to be able to reiterate and be iterative and, and you know, sort of constantly think about how do I improve this or how do I pivot? Because what we found mm -hmm. with our 12 finalists working with them over the year or over the six months or so was that many of their ideas change sometimes slightly or have changed sometimes dramatically from what they originally proposed. You know, there was a core essential part of that but it changed in how they thought they could operationalize it, maybe how they thought they could fund it, market it, all those kind of things. So I would really encourage, I mean, one of our finalists last year, it literally was the back of a napkin idea that she had, and she just needed to take that step. Um, now, she didn't win, but she found funding because of the challenge outside of OSV. And so that's, you know, we want to build the innovative tribe, but we also want to bring the investor tribe to this. Oh, um, you know, there, yeah, there are there are lots of folks that both foundations and individual philanthropists that understand the church needs innovation to bring people to Christ, to stem the tide of people leaving the church. Though under the magisterium and in, in, in alignment Amen. with the church, but innovation and in what we're doing. And so what we found is those innovators, we want to bring those investors and those innovators together. So I would also tell your, your listeners that, oh, I'm not a nonprofit, I have a for-profit idea. That is fine. Our, our final last year, we're split six and six, six nonprofit ideas, six for-profit. So we brought also some equity investment, some uh, venture capitalists to these events. Uh, we have a couple of our challengers that have gotten some equity investment in their ideas um, that are for-profit companies. and so. Really, it's about building that community of both innovators and investors. Where have you been all my life? I mean, I, I mean, I, as a CPA, you know, I help people launch businesses. But a lot of times they'll come to me and I'll, I'll just have a conversation with them and I go, oh, you got gift, this gift and this talent and you got this and you got this. Why don't you put that together and do this business? And they go, well, OK. And I just say, well, put a red letter, find on the calendar, what's the day you're going to start? And then let's do a little plan. And you, and you see the gifts and talents that God's given people um, and, 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 and to move forward. So, I mean, I'm just so thrilled with I, this idea. We need it so much in the church today. And you, 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 these young people that are sitting at Starbucks, these young entrepreneurial people that are like, they're just so ready. They got an idea. Put, put, put it together and you can be coached. I'm sure you guys will give some coaching to them. When they start asking you questions, you're going to, you're going to find out your, 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 your idea is going to turn a little bit. You are going to flesh it out. You're going to start seeing more what it really wants to be. And doggone it, we're running out of time, Matt. But, but um, where can they find, where can they find out more about this challenge? OSVchallenge.com. OSVchallenge.com. 
and all the questions and contact information. If you have further questions, it'll take you right to me, and I'm happy to answer those questions. You know what someone told to me once? They said, you know, um, EWTN was started by a pioneer. You know, she needed the innovation. She was an innovator. Now it's more run by, you know, once you get into a certain orbit, it's different. But the church always needs the pioneers. And you that are listening, uh, are hearing this, take, take the, just take the first step and be bold and determined and, 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 and find out what God is speaking to you about. Because so many things that happen, it's because it's almost like the Holy Spirit comes up, gives you a nudge and says, hey, you got a minute? And then that little seed of an idea can grow. And you've got the right person here, Matt Smith, and that, his team that will help you do that. Where do they find you? Where do they find it again? One more time. OSVChallenge.com. So go right there. You'll find all the information. And if you have any other questions, a number of different ways to contact me. So fired up about this. We need we, The church needs us so much. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We've run out of time. If you want to find out more about us, you can go to deepadventure.com and um, become part of the pack. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.